اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 312 سورة العصر آیا نمبر 1 to 3 سورة العصر is a مکی سورة and it was revealed after سورة الشرح it has only 3 verses 14 words and 68 letters عصر is used for time what does عصر mean? time And there are other meanings of the word asr as well, which inshallah I will tell you later. And Imam Shafi'i, he said about the surah, wal-asr, that if Allah had only revealed this surah, it would be sufficient as warning, as mu'idah. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that the rest of the Qur'an is not important or the rest of the sharia is not necessary. No. What the statement means is that this surah is enough as an admonition. This surah is enough as an advice. Meaning, for someone who could take a lesson, this surah is enough for him. He will understand the reality of this life. He will focus on what is important and he will not be distracted by that which is unimportant. وَالْعَصْرِ By time. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Indeed, mankind is in loss. وَالْعَصْرِ الْعَصْرِ عَيْنْ صَادْرَ عَصَرَ Literally means to squeeze. وَفِيهِ يَعْصِرُونَ In that year, they will press, they will squeeze, meaning they will take out a lot of juice. Yusuf a.s. said to the people. And عَصْرِ is used for time. There is another word that is used for time, which is dahr. Dahr, I told you earlier, is used for time, that is, since always and will be forever. Hal ata ala al-insani hinu min dahr So from the entire dahr, the human being has been given hin, a little bit. And also refers to the time that is from the beginning of existence of human beings until the Day of Judgment. So also is whose time basically? of the human race from when the human beings were created until the day of judgment this is what asr refers to secondly the word asr also refers to the later part of the day the time that is after zawal until ghurub some have said that refers to the time after zawal until ghurub zawal meaning from the time when the sun begins to decline so after noon until sunset. So it's the later part of the day. And others have said that no, this is the time of Asr. The time of Asr, which is not from when the sun begins to decline, but rather it is after that. So it's the evening part, the last part of the day. What does it refer to? The last part of the day. And Asr also means Salat al-Asr. So while Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears an oath by what? Time, time in general. And remember that whenever Allah swears by something, what does it show? Its importance, its relevance to the context. So why does Allah swear by time? Because time is always fleeting, it's always passing on. With each moment gone, a part of life is over. And every moment that has passed, it will never ever return again. Loss of time means loss of loss of life. And secondly, Al-Asr over here can also refer to the time of Asr, the late evening. Why? Because at that time, the day is coming to an end. And as the day is coming to an end, it brings in a person a sense of loss, a sense of sadness, that another day is over. Yet there's so much more to do. Another chance is gone. And Asr is also Salatul Asr. Why? Because this is a very, very important Salat. It's called Salatul Wusta. And Wusta, Wust, it also means that which is most important. Yes, it's in the middle, but it also means Fudla, meaning the one that is most excellent, most virtuous. And we learn from a hadith that whoever misses the Asr prayer intentionally, then it is as if he has lost his family and property. Just imagine, missing the Asr prayer is like losing one's family and property. Everything that a person has. It's as though he has lost everything. 
So Allah swears an oath by Al-Asr, Wal-Asr. And what's the jawab, Qasim? That inna al-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, the human being. Who does this refer to? Al-insan. All of us. All of us. All people. Every single human being. He is lafi khusr. He is surely in loss. What is khusr? When a person suffers, he suffers a loss. A loss of what? Like for example in business, a person loses the capital even, not just the profit, but even what he invested initially. He goes completely bankrupt. So what is he left with? What is he left with? Nothing at all. A complete loser. Who has nothing in his hands. So, in al insana la fi khusr. The human being is surely in loss. Notice it hasn't been said that in al insana la khasir. Or he will suffer. Yaksiru. No, what has been said? Fi khusr. He is already in loss. What does it mean? That the human being is in a state of loss. Any person who is born. From the moment of his birth, he is in loss. How is he in loss? Because the moment he is born, his countdown has begun. Each day, each moment, each second, each hour that passes by, a part of his life is over. He can never ever stop the time. He can never pause it. No. He is lafi khusr. He is losing, losing, losing. But what do we think? That as each day goes by, each year goes by, we are gaining. We're not gaining. What are we doing? We're in fact losing. Each moment gone is what? A loss. It's in fact a loss. Because life is only for a specified time. And every moment that is passed is what? A diminishing of that time. Time is going away. And when time is going away, that means your life is going away. Once that time is over, what does that mean? Your life is over. And if you don't have anything at the end, then what does it mean? You're a great loser. So, in al insana lafi khusr. Indeed, mankind is in loss. This is a fact. Every single person is suffering, losing. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those people who believe. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْ Those people who do these four things, who have these four traits, who spend their time doing these four things, then they are not in loss. Why? Because yes, their life will be over. Each moment is past. But those moments are passed in what? Iman, amal salih, tawasli bil haq, tawasli bil sabr. And as a result, yes, the time has gone, but at the end they have something. They have something beneficial that's going to save them. You understand? Like they say, time is money. Time is money. Why? Because if you invest your time in something, if you use your time properly, you can make something out of it. And if you don't use your time properly, then it's as though you are wasting it. You're wasting money. So, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ It is only such people who are exempt from loss. Who? Those people who use their time in the best way. Those people who do not waste their lives, who do not waste their time, but rather they use their time. The fact is that every person, every single person, the time that he has, the life that he has, the moments that he has, they are precious. No person can say, my time is not that valuable. Another person says, my time is extremely valuable. No. Every person's life, his moments, the time that he has, these moments are precious and they must be used properly. They must be availed. And no person can say that I have extra time. I have time left over. There is nothing such as extra time. There is nothing such as time left over. Why? Because every moment is necessary. 
every moment is precious. Either a person uses his time in something that will benefit him, or he wastes that time. Either a person is using his time in something that's going to benefit him, or he is wasting time. There is no third option. Think about it. Picture this. Think with me. That either a person is using his time in something beneficial, and if he's not using his time in something beneficial, then what is he doing? Wasting his time. There is no other third option. Because in the insan and the khus, in the ladina amanu wa amil salihat wa tawasub al haq wa tawasub al sabr. But we generally don't like to think like this. That I'm wasting my time. What do we like to say? I'm taking a break. I'm taking things easy. I'm just relaxing. I'm just having fun. I'm just trying to wind down. That's what we say. But the fact is that if you're not using your time in something productive, something beneficial, something that falls into these four things that are mentioned here, you are in fact wasting your time. And if you're wasting your time, what are you doing? Wasting your life. Wasting your life. So which people are safe from loss? Those who use their time. Those who do not waste their moments. Those who do not waste their life. So what are these four things that a person must do in the time that he has been given, in the life that he has been given in order to save himself from loss? First of all, Iman. That a person must, must have Iman. Because without Iman, a person is in loss. How? That no matter what he does, no matter how effectively he uses his time, if he doesn't have Iman, then his deeds will be worth nothing in the hereafter. They will bring him no reward in the hereafter. So the first and foremost, the most essential thing that a person must have in his life is Iman. And the details of Iman, throughout, they can be found in the Quran and Sunnah. In Hadith Jibreel, for example, we learn about what a person must believe in. So, belief, first of all, means that a person must believe in everything that is essential, that is necessary. That a person must believe in everything that Allah and His Messenger have informed us of. Whether it's about the Day of Judgment or the Prophets of Allah or the Angels or the Day of Judgment or the Decree, whatever. The books. Everything that Allah and His Messenger have informed us of, it's necessary that a person believes. How? In its entirety. Because if a person does not believe in entirety, then his Iman is unacceptable. If he believes in some messengers and not others, if he believes in some things about the Day of Judgment and not others, then his Iman is not acceptable. And then, Iman must also be without doubt. When it comes to Iman, people are at three levels. One is a person who believes with conviction. His Iman is firm. He believes with certainty. There is no doubt, no shakiness, nothing. Another type of person is he who completely rejects. Another type of person is he who believes but he has doubt. So which kind of iman is acceptable? The first one. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا Iman like that of the Sahaba. That when Abu Bakr was told, the Prophet ﷺ has gone to Mi'raj, that's what he said. He said yes. If he has said it, I believe in that. So this kind of iman is necessary. Which kind of iman? Which is without doubt, without shak, free of all forms of shak. That a person has yaqeen in everything that Allah and His Messenger has informed of. So this kind of iman is necessary. But this iman, is that alone sufficient? After iman, what else is necessary? وَعَمِلُ الصَّالِحَ So with iman, when a person does something, only then it's going to benefit him. Otherwise, he's a total loser. The second thing that's most essential is أَعْمَالُ الصَّالِحَ Righteous deeds. And if a person does not perform righteous deeds, again, he is in loss. Again, he is suffering. And the fact is that the more righteous deeds a person is performing, the more he is taking benefit of his life, of his time. And if a person is not busy in performance of righteous deeds, then he is wasting his life. Then he is in loss. Now what are righteous deeds? 
those deeds that we consider to be good or that any person says, I think it's good to do it, so therefore I should do it? No. What's the criteria? Sincerity and conformity. Ikhlas and according to the teachings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And remember that righteous deeds are also various levels, there are various types. And generally they can be divided into two things. The rights of Allah and secondly, the rights of the creation. The rights of Allah like for example prayer, fasting, hajj, so on and so forth. And with regards to the rights of creation, for example, respecting them, spending on them, zakat, sadaqah, fulfilling your duties towards them, whoever they are, like for example parents, husband, children, fulfilling your duties towards them. Similarly, rules pertaining to, like for example, isti'dan, that when you go to somebody's house, how you're to knock on their door, seek their permission. Similarly, about majalis, how to sit in gatherings, how to greet one another, how to speak to one another, these are all what? Different forms of righteous deeds. So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ First of all, iman, and secondly, righteous deeds. A person must spend his time doing those actions which Allah likes, which Allah approves of. And then after amal salih, what's the third thing that could save a person? Tawasi. Which tawasi? Tawasi bil haq. What does tawasi mean? Tawaso, this is a fair, and tawasi is the mustar. It's from the root letters wa sadia wasiya. What does wasiya mean? An important instruction that is given at the time of death by a dying person. So it's a very, very important instruction. He gives it with a lot of emphasis. And tawasaw, tawasi, what does it show? Instructing one another, encouraging one another, enjoining on one another. So tawasi, this is also essential for a person in order to save himself from loss. What do we think? That if we're telling other people about something good, we are benefiting them. That's what we think. But what do we learn? That when you're telling other people, when you're reminding other people, when you're enjoining them, in fact, who are you benefiting? Yourself. Who are you saving from loss? Yourself. So the first person to benefit is who? You yourself. Now there are two types of tawasi that are mentioned over here. First of all, tawasi bil haq. What does al-haq refer to? This deen, this sharia that Allah has given, the Qur'an. Because everything about it is what? Truth. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلَ This Qur'an, this religion, everything about it, of it, is what? True. So it is incumbent on a person who wishes to save himself from loss, that he should spend his time doing what? Doing what? Telling other people about this haq and listening to them as well when they remind him of haq. Because tawasi is two-way, right? So you're telling somebody and they're also telling you. So it shows two things. That first of all, a person is not keeping knowledge limited to himself, but rather he is sharing it. Now you also have come to know of this haq. What is your obligation? If you want to save yourself from loss, can you just keep this knowledge with yourself? You have to share it. You have to pass it on. You have to spread this light. Because if you don't, you are in loss. You are in loss. If you don't share it, if you don't tell other people, you are in loss. You may have a certificate. You may have something at the end. But you will be in loss if you don't share it with others. Why? Because when you don't share it with others, then you're limiting the khair. You're depriving yourself of a great opportunity to earn hasanat. A great opportunity of sadaqah jariya. So when you deprive yourself, what is that? Khusr. Loss. And the thing is that when a person tells other people, then what happens? He is also reminded. It solidifies your knowledge. It solidifies what you have learned. And if you read something and close it and put it away, then what's going to happen? Whatever you have learned, you will also forget about it. And the fact is that when you get busy in this, that you're telling other people about haq, then you also get to hear haq. When you're telling other people, others will also tell you. 
So it's in fact an excuse to keep yourself firm. It's an excuse to keep yourself firm. Because if you don't tell others, others won't tell you. You won't be in that culture. So what a bil haq. And this includes enjoining good and forbidding evil as well. So what a bil haq. And secondly, what kind of tawasi is necessary? Bis sabr. Patience. Because without patience, a person cannot live in this dunya. Without patience, he cannot survive. Without patience, a person cannot be thankful. Without patience, a person cannot remain obedient. Without patience, a person cannot refrain from disobedience. Because remember, there are three types of sabr. One is on ita'a. Another is anil ma'asiyah. And the third is ala taqdeer. That first is on obedience to Allah. Second is away from disobedience. Stopping yourself from disobedience. And thirdly, on the decree of Allah. Things that are beyond your control. You don't have any control over them, but they happen. They happen. So when they happen, what are you supposed to do? Sabr. But sometimes what happens? When you're in that situation, you forget to do sabr. But because you have been telling other people to do sabr, when they see you, they remind you. Isn't it beautiful? This is how you're saved. And if you don't tell other people to be patient, then they won't tell you to be patient. Then how will you have patience? You won't have patience. And then you will suffer loss. So what a well sabr. Recitation. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Imam al-Razi, he has written in his book, Tafsir al-Kabir, that I learned the meaning of Surah al-Asr from the man who sells ice. An ice seller, someone who is selling ice. You're like, what? Yes, people used to sell ice and they still sell ice where there are no freezers or where there is no electricity. And when a person is selling ice that he doesn't have a freezer that he has plugged into a switch or something like that. No. He has a huge block of ice or something like that, which he has covered with a thick piece of cloth. And as people come, they purchase ice from him. And you can imagine when is ice being sold in what weather? Hot. So he has a limited amount of time. A limited amount of time in which he has to sell that ice. If he doesn't sell that ice, what does it mean? Khusr. He has lost his capital even. He has lost everything. He will have nothing left in his hands. So he said that I learned the meaning of Surah Al-Asr from the man who sells ice, who was calling out in the market, have mercy on the one whose possessions are melting. Have mercy on the one whose possessions are melting. And he kept on repeating these words, that have mercy on me and buy ice from me. For if you don't, I'm going to lose everything. This is the reality of time. It's constantly passing away. The clock is constantly ticking away. Constantly. It never stops. And you're supposed to avail every moment. Because once it's gone, you've lost it. You can never bring it back. And in this time that we have been given, what are we to do? Amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasub al-haq wa tawasub al-sab. These four things are essential. Without it, you're in loss. I was just thinking, we have three weeks off until the next course. And all of us have thought, okay, these three weeks, I'm going to relax, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm just going to chill, sleep in, do this, do that, you know, and so I can be energized, re-energized for the next course. Who knows if we're even going to live that long? And if we waste this time, then we've lost it. It's never going to come back. And we have so much opportunity to do some good in this time. So much opportunity. Make a plan for yourselves. Don't let it go away. You're young. 
you're healthy. You know, you have that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you. You have many blessings. Something. Yes. Thumma la tusalunna yawma idhna anil na'im. Do some many blessings. Teach someone. Go pra- fix your. Go review your grammar notes. Go review your tajweed. Go fix your tajweed. If you didn't have that time to do it, grab someone. Okay, every single day we're going to sit for half an hour. We're going to make sure we practice like reading one juz a day or however much you can. Do it. Do it at that time. Don't waste that time, but do something. Yes. Because many times when we have, you know, what we consider to be free time, whereas there's nothing such as free time, but what we consider to be free time, we waste it. We don't use it properly. But the fact is that the time that Allah has given to us, it is so that we do something. And remember, we learned earlier, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ It doesn't mean that you are doing the same thing, you could do something different. But that different thing should also be Productive and beneficial Something that fits into these four things It's called life's index cards And it's a sister who wrote about a dream that she had And in this dream She finds herself in a room full of Filing cabinets the size of index cards And she's alone in this room And each Filing cabinet is labeled something So she walks up to one you know, Confused, what is this room? She walks up to one and she sees the title of that index card Saying, people I was friends with So she starts opening it She's curious she looks through the index cards and she starts recognizing all the names of the people on the index card. She realizes these are all her friends. And she opens another filing cabinet, TV shows that I've watched. And she recognizes all the TV shows. And then she opens another one and it says, Sins that I've committed. And this filing cabinet is so long. As she's opening it, she recognizes every single sin in that filing cabinet. And she takes the index card out and she tries to rip it she can't rip it she throws it on the floor she tries to break it it's as hard as steel and she just she's so scared at that point and she looks here and there and every single filing cabinet full of her life and she just tries to get out of the room she can't get out of the room finally in that confusion she sees one cabinet that says people I spoke to about Islam and she opens it and there's like a few cards a few things and that dream it scared her so much that that's when she learned to change her lifestyle because she realized that Everything is recorded and we don't realize that. That your deeds, your deeds, they will wait, right? What does that mean? So what are our life's index cards going to be like? When you're doing da'wah, you will hear all kinds of things. Let's say, for example, they would tell you, who are you to tell me this? You're not a scholar. You know, it's only for the scholar to teach these things and all that stuff. And like, you know, they hate it when you remind them. But what I was going to say is, no matter what you hear and no matter what people do to you just be patient ignore it and consider it like it doesn't matter whether they convert to Islam or they increase their iman and they do their ibadah and all that stuff. what matters is you convey it. you know we're here to convey the message to share the, the knowledge before just to you think, benefit the other you benefit yourself yeah just to think that like you know you're doing what you can you're conveying the message and right there like you know but just don't stop. Like, and there's a lot of people. I was thinking, like, you know, I I hate to leave Al Huda. Like, you know, I want to stay here and all that stuff. But then again, I'm talking to another sister, and it's just like, you know, if you stay in Al Huda and you don't get out there, there's a lot of people who are ignorant. They need a lot of help, and we're here to help people. It's not for us to to keep this information, or it's not for us to post about it and all that. So just think about. What it could do to other people And we see that with Tawasli bil haq, tawasli bil sabr Is also essential, right? That you need somebody to tell you to be patient All of us know that we should be patient All of us know that The difficulties in life There are tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we should be patient But the thing is You need to be reminded Because we forget We need to be motivated You know, we need to hear it no matter who we are, at what level, we need to hear it. And for that, righteous company is very important. Surrounding yourself with the right people, with the right friends, is very important. So we see that tawasi bil haq and tawasi bil sabr both go together, hand in hand. For the castle, you know, people encourage you, they motivate you, yeah, go ahead, get some more, you know, they praise you. But for this haq as well, for sabr as well, you need that motivation. The surah tells us the recipe for success, the way to success, 
if you want reward in the hereafter, you want to save yourself from loss, from punishment, then this is what you have to do. You have to do these four things. Without it, you're in loss. I was just thinking how beautifully short surah and the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the three portions. The first part is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you have the iman, that he, you, you recognize that he's your khaliq. Mm. And then amal saleh, this is the right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for us, that you do something for your own self as well. And the third part is tawasu bil haq and tawasu bil sab. This is the right of the people as mm. well, that you give them their rights. So we need to be wise how we divide our whole time, the day 24 hours, into this portion. Yes. And I just experienced one wonderful experience this morning. I was thinking like I was being given one little job to go into the Fahmul Quran and uh, help them to do the du'as. And in the beginning, you know, uh, being human, sometimes whispers come in your mind, time would be very short. I have to do other things like being GIs and maybe I won't be able to do it. And today when I made them that what did you learn in these four sessions? It's only four sessions, one class a week. And one of the sisters, she said, I was not wearing hijab and I have started wearing hijab. Just, I go there only for 20 minutes. And out of it, if somebody is listening the haq and is changing, it's not a bad deal. So we should never belittle anything. You never know. Allah will put more barakah in my time. This yes. 20 minutes, I'll get somewhere else. Very I can true. listen this to see while my kids are listening. So what I miss here, I feel bad. So why I'm missing this time. But inshallah, Allah will and many times we try to save time from doing good things hmm? I do not have these 10 minutes I do not have these 5 minutes but the thing is that you know when we're sitting in front of the television or just talking to other people or just sitting and doing nothing it doesn't matter just the other day I was talking to somebody and they were saying oh I've spent this much time trying to practice the lesson for you know just uh, one ayah it took them like 20 minutes or something I said, okay, it's only 20 minutes that you spent studying the Qur'an. What's the big deal? I mean, you spend an hour in front of the television. You spend an hour driving. You spend two hours in front of your computer. It doesn't matter then. Then time is not that precious. But only when it comes to doing good, then time becomes extra precious. Okay. Let's listen to the recitation again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر